Now you're probably wondering why I'm blowing into a balloon at the beginning of this video. The thing is that there's a, an application type setting in calculus called related rates that we can actually look at the change of different entities that are related to each other over time and incorporate our implicit differentiation process to actually answer questions about these related rates. When I look at like a balloon, a spherical balloon, as I blow into the balloon, the rate at which I blow into the balloon is how the volume of air is changing with respect to time in this balloon. And as you notice, as I did that, the volume in the balloon is changing, the surface area of the balloon is changing, and the radius of the sphere for my spherical balloon is changing. So all of these entities are changing at connected rates within that process. Well, related rate questions require us to apply our implicit differentiation further than what we had done before. So starting this video, I'm going to have us practice how to do that, and then we will come back to the type of questions of related rate, starting with one where someone is blowing up a spherical balloon. X and Y are dependent on t. So in the past we've started with implicit differentiation where in the equation we had a dependent variable and an independent variable. In the setup of the question it might ask me to find say dy dx. Well the variable in the numerator of that notation is the dependent variable and the variable in the denominator is the independent variable. And so whenever I was applying my implicit differentiation, when they were all mixed up in the equation, if I was differentiating the independent variable, I would just apply the derivative. If I was differentiating the dependent variable, I would take the derivative of the outside action and work my way to, into the innermost part where then I would multiply by the derivative of the inside stuff and if that was the dependent variable, the notation for that derivative would be dy dx. Now, if they gave me the question where they just said find y prime and it was all mixed up, <clears throat> remember that y prime notation is saying, well, y was your dependent variable and your independent variable is a, var a different variable. In the related rates, I have for example here, x and y dependent on t. So t is not even showing up in this equation, but t is my independent variable. x and y are both dependent variables. So when I differentiate this, each time I differentiate the dependent letter, I have to multiply by d that letter dt. So in this particular question, it wants me to find the value of dy dt for sine squared x plus cosine y is equal to 1. Now remember, sine squared x means sine x quantity squared plus my cosine y is equal to 1. And now when I differentiate for this first term, I'll bring down the 2 keep the base sine x the way it is, subtract 1 from the exponent, gives me an exponent of 1, but then I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of sine x is cosine x, and then still times the derivative of x, but x now is dependent on t, so the notation for the derivative of x is dx dt. And then plus, the derivative of cosine y is a negative sine y, and then times the derivative of the argument. y is also dependent on t, so times dy dt is equal to, and on the other side of the equation I have a constant term, and the derivative of constant term is zero. Now we can plug in the values that we know because we've differentiated. 
So I have 2 times the sine of, well, x is pi over 4, times the cosine of, again, x is pi over 4, times dx dt, dx dt is the square root of 3 over 2. And then plus, and it's plus a minus sine y um, dy dt. So I'll just make that a minus sine y is pi, pi over 3. And then dy dt is equal to 0. Now we can evaluate these trig functions of these um, special angles that we have. So it's 2 times the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. And then times the square root of 3 over 2. And then minus the sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. And then dy dt is equal to 0. Now multiplying all of these in the front here, I have 2 times the square root of 2 over 2 times the square root of 2 over 2. Well, in the first row, so I multiply from left to right, 2 over 1 times the square root of 2 over 2, those 2's will remove as common factor pairs. And then the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. Divide by 2, again, that is 1. Um, multiply 2, then the square root of 3 over 2. So I have the square root of 3 over 2 minus the square root of 3 over 2 dy dt is equal to 0. And then I can subtract the square root of 3 over 2 from both sides, divide by negative the square root of 3 over 2, and I get dy dt is equal to 1 when x is equal to pi over 4, y is equal to pi over 3, and dx dt is the square root of 3 over 2. Now this process is the process that we're going to use when we solve application problems with our related rates. We needed to just see one specifically set out and worked through our thoughts about what we need to do when we get our equation for our particular application problem and go from there. So next up we're going to do an application problem using that idea of the balloon that was at the start of this video. So here again, we talk about our spherical balloon, and it's being inflated at the rate of 8 cubic centimeters per second. So as that air is being blown in, it's changing the volume of the air in the balloon. Now it says, how fast is the radius of the balloon changing when the radius is 10 centimeters? So, with this, we want to look at, well, what is the relationship between the volume of a sphere and the radius of the sphere? Because that is what we're talking about in this setup. It gives us our volume formula that we need to use, which is volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And this formula just has the two variables that we need to work with. If I had another variable in there, I would need to try to find a connection between them to make a substitution and get it all in the variables that I was interested in. Now here's my formula for volume of a sphere and the radius. And we also want to note what we have in the information. So it says it's being inflated at the rate of 8 cubic centimeters per second. The notation of the units is important to take along with. And it helps us determine what it is that we are given is information and then also what is requested of us to find. So since this is cubic centimeters per second, they're giving us a volume measurement with respect to a time measurement, and it's the rate. So it's the change of the volume with respect to time that this is denoting. 
So that is my dv dt is equal to that 8 cubic centimeters per second. Now it says, how fast is the radius of the balloon changing? So it wants you to find dr dt when the radius is 10 centimeters, when r is equal to 10 centimeters. So this is giving us information of our dependent variable volume with respect to time, and it's giving, asking us to get the rate of the change of the radius with respect to time. So what I want to do here is to differentiate this with respect to time, where both volume and radius are dependent. So the derivative of V with respect to T is 1 dV dt. And then on the right hand side, I have 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. cubed. So I have a constant times my variable to a power. To differentiate it, I'll bring down the exponent, multiply it to the numerical coefficient. So I get 3 times 4 thirds is 4 pi r, subtract 1 from the exponent, I get an exponent of 2, and then multiply by the derivative of r respect to t, so dr dt. Now we plug in the information that we have. dv dt is 8 cubic centimeters per second, and then I have 4 pi times r is my 10 centimeters, so I have 10 centimeters quantity squared, and then times dr dt. So that will give me 8 cubic centimeters per second is equal to, well, 10 squared is 100, and centimeters squared, and then multiply that to the number. So I have 100 times 4 times pi is 400 pi square centimeters times dr dt. And I want to solve for dr dt, so we're going to divide both sides by 400 pi square centimeters. that can remove. My centimeters squared with my centimeters cubed just leave centimeters. And then 8 goes into 450 times. So I have 1 over 50 pi centimeters per second. So that is the exact value at which um, rate at which the radius is changing with respect to time. Now that gives us our first part of our um, solution. How fast is the radius of the balloon changing when the radius is 10 centimeters? We still need to answer how fast is the surface area of the balloon changing at that time? To do that process, we need to look at the surface area of a sphere. And if you look up on like a Google search of surface area of a sphere, or even if you wanted to do that for your volume of a sphere, if you hadn't remembered what it is, always remember you can research and just find that formula by just putting it in your Google search. Well, the surface area of a sphere's formula is 4 pi r squared. So we're going to do that next, and then making sure we say at that time it means that the other values that we have are information that we can use. We've got our equation, and we have information that we found before. We know it's when the radius is 10 
10 centimeters. And we also found out last part of the solution that dr dt, when the radius is 10 centimeters, is our 1 over 50 pi centimeters per second. That allows us then to go to this equation and we want to find out how fast the surface area of the sphere is changing at that moment. Taking the derivative of both sides, the derivative of a with respect to t is 1 dA dt is equal to, well, the derivative of 4 pi times r squared, 4 is a number times pi is a number, so that's a number times r squared. So I'll bring the exponent down to differentiate it. That's 8 pi r now to the first power dr dt. So our dA dt is equal to 8 pi, take out the radius and put in our 10 centimeters, take out dr dt and put in our 1 over 50 pi centimeters per second. And as we multiply that across, dA dt is equal to, well remember that's over 1 and our 50 pi is in the denominator. So I will have 80 pi centimeter times centimeter is centimeter squared. over 50 pi and then seconds, removing our common factor pairs of our pi's and a common factor pair of 10 into the numerator gives me an 8 in the numerator and into the denominator gives me a 5. So my d dt at that moment is 8 fifths square centimeters Second. This related rate question I would like to do for you is one in which we have a 13 foot ladder is leaning against a building. If the base of the ladder is being pulled away at 8 feet per second when the base is 12 feet from the building, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the building? We are going to call this or mark this vertical part as representing our building and then use this meter stick as a representation of the ladder. Now when I look at the ladder leaning against the building, as I pull the ladder away from the building, you'll notice that the tip of the ladder is sliding down the building's wall. If I were to push the ladder closer, the top would be going higher along the wall. Well, the distance the ladder is from the building and the rate of change in which that is, rate of which that's changing, and the height of the top of the ladder and the rate of change at which that's being affected are related rates. For this, we also are assuming that the building is perpendicular to the ground and the ground is a level ground. So we have a right triangle that is in our diagram. While the distance the ladder from the base of the building and the distance the ladder tip is from the ground is changing throughout, something that's not changing throughout is the length of the ladder. That length of the ladder is always the 13 feet. When we are going to work with our equation, anything that's a changing entity needs to be held off until after the derivative has been taken before you plug those numbers in. But if there's an entity that's staying fixed throughout the process, that is what you can actually do your plug-in of your value before you differentiate. In our diagram, we are then going to look at our horizontal distance from the building to the ladder base as x, the vertical distance 
from the ground to the tip of the ladder as y, but our ladder is always our 13 feet. Now as we go through and work with the getting of the equation for this, this is a right triangle. I can use the Pythagorean theorem, so I have x squared plus y squared is equal to 13 squared. My equation for this is x squared plus y squared is equal to 169. Now the question asks us to find the how fast the top of the ladder is sliding down the wall. So we want to find dy dt when the base is 12 feet from the building. So x is equal to 12 feet. And it's being pulled away from the building at a rate of 8 feet per second. So the rate at which the ladder is being pulled away is your dx dt. Another value we can find here is at that snapshot of time when my x is 12 feet, I can find the y value at that moment as well because I can use the Pythagorean theorem that 12 squared plus y squared is equal to 13 squared. So 144 plus y squared is equal to 169. Subtract the 144 from both sides, you get y squared is equal to 25, and then take the square root, y is equal to 5 at that moment. So by the Pythagorean theorem, y will be 5 feet. Now we can come over to our equation. We can't plug this x and y in here because it's a changing entity and it's only at that moment. So we need to take the derivative with respect to time first. The derivative of x squared is 2x times the derivative of x with respect to t is dx dt plus then 2y times the derivative of y with respect to t is dy dt is equal to, and the derivative of 169, well that's a constant term, and the derivative of a constant term is zero. Now that you've differentiated, you can plug in your values. So I have 2 times 12 feet times dx dt is 8 feet per second. Plus 2 times y is 5 feet times dy dt is equal to zero. I can think of this in terms of the 2 times the 12 feet over 1 and multiply across the, the top, across the numerators, and then across the denominators and remove your common factors if you have any. But for this, we get 192 square feet per second plus 10 feet dy dt is equal to zero. Now we want, to, we want to solve this for dy dt. So we are going to subtract the 192 square feet per second from both sides and get 10 feet dy dt is equal to a negative 192 square feet per second. Divide both sides by 10 feet. We get negative 192 square feet divided by 10 feet and then seconds. Now simplifying this, we get dy dt 
is equal to, and we have a common factor of our um, two that could go back and um, divide evenly, or you could divide this out and get a negative 19.2 common factor of feet cancel. So I'll get feet per second. Now this makes sense because, but it's negative because the tip of the ladder is going down the building as I pull the ladder away from the building. And that's why we are getting a negative for our rate as which the ladder is slipping down the building at that moment.